Yo, Lisa and my mother. Hello. Hello. Hey. All right. I'm going to go in there in like 60 seconds. Let me get you guys all hooked up. And I'm going to mute you, so I'm not going to be able to hear you. Hopefully, if you need to tell me anything like that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's do it. Take you through the lobby with me. Be a sweaty one. I don't know. Sometimes it feels so funny. Like I'm from the 80s when I wear one of these, but like really sweaty. You should have. Like, you should have felt funny. You look. Like, you look. You look good. I like it. You're like I feel like I need to do my step my step class or something. I like it. It's your it's your yoga look. That was my angel. Yes. There she is. There she is. Angel. Everything. <laughs> okay. Okay, friends, thank you, thank you, thank you, a million thank yous for showing up every time. It just makes me so happy to have people walk in the door. Um, let's see, so most of you have already heard, but tonight we're having the candlelight memorial for Jason, um, 5 to 7 p.m. If you don't, if you're not able to make it or um, you just, for whatever reason aren't coming but you do want to write you can feel free to write like a little message on one of those cards before you leave today and we're just going to give them all to his partner sarah at the end so if there's anything you want to say to jason or to her or just about jason and um yeah just write it on one of those cards and also no pressure <laughs> um and tonight also i am going to do so my 8 30 class is canceled tonight but i'm going to do a community breathwork circle instead at 7 30. Um, feel free to just come for that as well. So if you've not been to my breathwork class before, it's just one type of breathing. It's not hard, but it's just a long time to breathe in the same way. But what happens is it drops you kind of out of your mind and into your body and allows you to just move through a lot of emotions or process a lot of emotions or whatever. It's just inside of you. So at this time, I think our community probably has a lot happening inside. So it will just be a time where you can cry, where you can scream, where you can laugh and you have permission and you have a safe space. Um, so it's not something you have to talk or express anything verbally. You just get to be in your body and feel whatever there is to feel and let it express however it wants to. So that's tonight at 7.30. And then I think that's all about that that I can think of. Um, some people have also asked me, um, they can't make it to the, the thing tonight, but they want to support uh, monetarily. So there is a GoFundMe for his partner, Sarah, to help with, she's doing a celebration of life on the 21st. So if you want to donate to that, um, I'm happy to send you the information for that as well. And then I, hi, welcome. I think you guys already heard as well, but I'm going to be here for the rest of the month. My Peru retreat is no go. So, um, so yeah, I'll be here and I'll be here on Sunday teaching Sunday morning, 10 AM. Cece was here on Sunday. Loved it. <laughs> I like it. All right, let's do it. Unless there's any questions. I thought today, I feel like I, I taught on Tuesday. I taught on Wednesday and I feel like my classes like with J the Jason thing happening, I feel like I've just been like, they've been sad and depressing. 
<laughs> so today I'm like, let's just make this class um, fun. And I'm going to honor Jason by teaching my favorite thing he ever taught me, which was how to engage my mid back, which was like this light bulb thing. So I'm, I'll just tell you guys where we're going. So these muscles right in the middle of our back, a lot of us don't have any awareness of them. We know how to, we know how to move our lower back really easily. We know how to move our upper back really easily, but we get stuck right here in the middle. So um, a lot of us don't even have awareness of those muscles there. And we don't even know how to move that part of our spine. So Jason taught me mid back stuff. And then Chris knows for like two years, I was obsessed with like figuring out how to use it in all these different ways. So that's what we're going to play with today. Um, the, the thing I'm going to have us, we're going to do this first, but I want to show you so that you understand what's supposed to happen. So when you are on your back in a bridge, like, like you're setting up for a bridge pose, this is how, this is the best way and the easiest way for everybody to find their mid back muscles. So you're in a bridge pose, you bring your elbows in, not like in here, but like not out here. So elbows in, palms face each other, fingers face, or fingers face the sky, palms face each other. I call these robot arms. And I'm gonna focus on pressing into the back of my head and the backs of my arms, hugging in with my inner thighs. And then I'm gonna lift and lower just my butt. So just my butt is going down and I'm pressing my ribs actually up. And then my butt is lifting up and down. And each time it goes down, I'm trying to make this tunnel even bigger underneath the middle of my spine. So I'm not bringing this whole thing down and lifting it up. If all you can do, some people can't get their butt all the way to the ground. So just bring it down as low as you can. Oh, that's as far as it goes. And then lift it back up. Keep hugging in with your inner thighs. Keep pressing through the backs of your arms, back of your head. Okay. Hopefully my zoomies got that. All right, we're gonna start down on our backs. So go ahead and lie down. And as you come down onto your back, Maybe you want to stretch your body a little bit. Maybe you want to take your arms overhead, your legs forward. Maybe you want to just roll out your wrists or your ankles. You can curl up into a little ball for a moment. So anything goes and then find stillness. You can lay in Shavasana. You can lay with your feet on the ground, knees bent. Feet together, knees apart, anything that feels right to you. And then eventually close your eyes. Just let the ground really hold all of your weight. So notice, is there anywhere you're tightening, resisting, trying to hold yourself up? And can you just let your body soften and melt? Give yourself a moment to just feel the ground underneath you and the support it offers you. To feel anything that's happening inside of you. So how do you feel physically, energetically, emotionally? I'm just making space for it, allowing it. Next time you inhale very intentionally, fill up as big as you can and feel that breath travel all the way down into your low belly, low back. And when you're ready, open your mouth, take a big sigh. <sighs> Let's do that two more times. Great big inhale, fill up. Hold at the top, a little bit extra. So sip in a little more if you can, keep holding. And let it go. <sighs> Last time, biggest inhale you've taken all morning. Let it move into every space inside. It's like it's sweeping through your insides. And then open your mouth, big sigh. Ah, beautiful. All right, seal your lips now and start to cultivate ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose by way of the back of your throat. See if you can feel your breath continue to flow all the way down into your belly. So each time you breathe in, you feel the expansion of your low belly and even your low back. Exhale all the way to empty, slow and steady. 
See if you can find the bottom of each exhale by drawing your belly button down towards your spine, towards the ground. So your breath is slow. There's no rush in your breath. Be patient with it. Keep your breath flowing just like this. And draw your knees towards your belly. Take a little rock from side to side and just give your low back a nice little massage against the ground. Yeah. If it would feel good, maybe you take your knees in different directions. You can draw hearts with them, circle them. And eventually set your feet down, <clears throat> knees bent. So just like I demonstrated at the beginning, that's where we're going. So set up for a bridge pose, feet about hips width distance apart, all 10 toes face forward. Your arms can start just down by your sides. Exhale to pull your belly button down, scoop your tailbone up. And then as you inhale, peel your spine off your mat. Once you get to the top of your bridge, find your robot arm. So bend your elbows, palms face each other, fingertips face the sky. Make sure your elbows aren't super wide. So bring them in a little closer towards your ribs if you can. Hug in with your inner thighs. Press down through the backs of your arms and the back of your head. Take a great big inhale. As you exhale, lower just your butt down. So you're creating that tunnel underneath the middle of your spine. Yes. And then inhale to lift just your butt back up. Do those over and over again with your own breath at your own pace and see if you can make that tunnel even bigger every time you lower your butt down. So you're pressing up through your ribs, you're puffing up through your chest. And feel that connection to the middle of your spine. Feel the strength in your mid back and your lower back. Again, these are muscles a lot of us don't even have. We, don't, we haven't built the strength there and we don't have awareness of them. So start to wake them up. It might feel weird at first. I remember Jason would say, every time people start coming to my class, they tell me their back feels weird. <laughs> and it's a good thing. You're building new muscles. You're creating new awareness. Take about two more rounds. So in yoga, a lot of times, things that feel weird are good. There's so much space inside of us that we don't even know is there. Come back to a regular bridge pose. So complete the round you are on and then come back into your regular bridge. Work your shoulders kind of out from underneath you and take both of your arms straight up towards the sky. So you're just reaching up. Take one last inhale. And then this time as you exhale, one vertebra at a time, slowly lower your spine to the ground. Once you are back in a neutral spine position, just tee out your arms or cactus your arms against the ground. And then take your feet out wide to the width of your yoga mat. And take a few rounds of windshield wipers. So side to side. Go slow, move mindfully. And just breathe down into your low back, down into your hips, down into your pelvis. After a few rounds, let your knees come back to center and just let them fall in for a moment. So feet stay wide, but knees fall in. Maybe bring one hand to your heart space, bring one hand to your belly and allow yourself to just rest and feel. So feel the rise and fall of each breath. Feel the space in your low back, in your pelvis. Breathe down into it. See if you can relax your face even more. Soft and melt. Take one more big, huge inhale here. Fill up as big as you possibly can. Let that breath sweep out your insides and then sigh it out. Let it go. Ah. Good. Back to Ujjayi. 
draw your knees in towards your belly and start that rock again. So a little rock side to side. And then if you would rather, you can just roll to one side, fetal position, use your arms to guide yourself up to hands and knees or start to rock and roll along your spine. So forward and back along your spine. Give your muscles, those muscles on either side of your spine, a little massage. Take about six or seven rocks. Make them as smooth as possible. You feel like you could stop at any time. So you're not just using momentum, but you are building up some momentum. Eventually rock up, cross your ankles and bring your hands to the ground in front of you. Come forward to hands and knees. You might need to crawl back just a little bit so you're nice and centered on your mat. And then from here, just move intuitively. So like we always do, anything goes. Feel into your own body from the inside out. So perhaps you close your eyes. If you put your awareness in your spine, what's there? If you put your awareness in your shoulders or your hips, or even your hands, your fingers, your wrists. You might spin your fingers out to the sides. You might spin your fingers back towards your knees or even flip your palms to face up. So just explore in your own way. Feel into your own body. Anything goes. Beautiful, friends. Let your breath guide your movement. And then eventually back to downward facing dog. Just in your next few rounds of breath, start transitioning back to your down dog. Sarah, I'm happy you're here. All right, back in your dog pose. Do the same thing. Just explore. Pedal out your heels. Shift your weight side to side. Maybe you shake your head. Yes, no. So even though most of us have been in this pose lots and lots of times before, how does it feel in your body today? Physically, energetically, emotionally, what's flowing through you? Can you feel the rise and fall of your breath, the expansion and contraction? Can you use your breath to hold you? So your inhales, they create a sense of lightness, a sense of buoyancy. Your exhales take you all the way to empty and you feel that connection to your center, navel to spine, what we call Uddiyana Bandha. You guys look really good in your down dogs. Nice work. Take one more breath, if you want, a couple more. And then eventually just walk your hands to the back of your mat. Find yourself in a forward fold. So all the weight will come into your feet. Little or big bend in your knees. Make sure all of your toes are facing forward. If you want, give yourself a rag doll. Grab opposite elbows. Maybe bring your hands behind your head. Interlace your fingers at the base of your skull. Give the back of your neck some traction. Try to keep your weight just slightly forward in your feet rather than rocking back into your heels and really press down into your big toe mound. So not your big toe, but the mound right underneath it. See if you can lift your sit bones higher. See if you can let the crown of your head get just a little bit closer to the ground, breath by breath. Good, you guys, and just feel this pose. Feel the sensation in your legs. Feel your connection to center. Feel anything moving through. Take one more breath. Next time you inhale, halfway lift. So lengthen. See if you can press back through the tops of your thighs and even broaden through your sit bones. Exhale, fold, let it go. Do that one more time. Halfway lift. Top of your head reaches forward. Tops of thighs press back. Sit bones broaden. Nice job. Let it go. Fold. This time we'll come all the way up. So through your halfway lift, rise to stand. Make Sydney arms to the sky. 
Exhale, hands to your heart. Take a moment to just flow with your breath. Inhale, reach up, high mountain. Exhale, slow dive down, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway, feel into the length and strength in your back body. Exhale, bow nicely. See, root through your feet, lead with your heart, rise up. Arms reach up, maybe you even gaze up. Hands to heart center, exhale. One more round like that. Maybe close your eyes this time. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, feel your body move through space as you dive down. So from the inside out, what do you feel? Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lift and lengthen. Nice, Chris. Exhale, fold, let it go. Ha. Root through your feet, lead with your heart all the way to stand, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart center. All right, inhale, take your arms up. And then as you exhale, we're going to sit back into a chair pose. So bend your knees, weight in your heels, sit low. Now here comes our mid back stuff. Bend your elbows to a cactus position and try to press your arms back and try to press your chest forward. So as you do that, you should feel your back muscles squeeze. But what often happens is we lose connection to our center. So draw your belly button back towards your spine. You'll feel your low back lengthen a little bit but keep lifting through your heart. Keep squeezing your shoulder blades towards your spine. See if maybe you can keep that and extend your arms up. If that doesn't work, come back to cactus arms, perfectly fine. Sit a little bit lower, stay lifted in your heart, tone through your lowest, deepest abdominals, weight in your heels, pick up your toes, spread them apart. One more round. As you inhale, reach up and stretch. If you want, you can come up to your tiptoes, high mountain. Maybe you stay on your tiptoes, balance challenge, swan dive down. It helps me if I bend my knees and stick my butt out. Heels on the ground for your halfway lift. Nice, Christine. Breathe in, lengthen. Good. And then exhale, plant your hands or your fingers. And like you're a four-legged creature, crawl your hands to the top of your mat. So do it mindfully, intentionally. Sometimes I try to walk like a cat. Eventually plank pose, top of a push up. Yes, shoulders over wrists, hips level with your shoulders. Take a great big inhale here. And then as you exhale, just lift your hips up and press them back, downward facing dog. Inhale, rock forward again, high plank. See if you can come way forward onto your tippy tippy toes, push the ground away. And then from your center, exhale, lift your hips, press them back, down dog. We're gonna add a push up this time. Inhale, rock forward, high plank. Exhale, lower just halfway. Chaturanga, hold, strong arms, strong belly. Inhale, push back up. And then exhale, back to your down dog. This time, inhale, come forward, high plank. You can lower your knees if you'd like to modify. Slowly lower all the way to your belly. So take your time, move slowly, intentionally. Find a back bend of your choice here. So baby cobra, full cobra, up dog. See if you can start to feel a little more mobility right in the middle of your spine. So this one's just for you to feel. You can take a couple of breaths or so, eventually downward facing dog. Nice, Kate. Really good awareness, everybody. All right, back in your down dog, great big deep breaths. Next time you inhale, take your right leg to the sky. And then take a moment, if you want, you can open your hip or roll out your ankle, but eventually find square hips, inner thighs face each other, and your right hip faces down, maybe slightly back. Good, so press through your fingertips 
And then as you press down and forward through your fingertips, press up and back through your right foot. So if you can get your right leg really, really strong, maybe even feel the front of your right thigh turn on that quad muscle. Take one more big inhale. Exhale, right knee to your nose. So curl in, round your spine, hollow out your belly. Stay here, breathe in. Push the ground away, lift through your waistline. Exhale, slowly, softly step through, low lunge. Rise up to your crescent lunge in your own time. So maybe you wanna bring your hands to your front thigh as you settle. Maybe you bring your hands to your hips, feel into square hips. Eventually your arms reach up and just settle in, find your breath. So the stability in this pose comes by hugging in, finding your center. So pull energetically your front hip back, back hip forward. Yeah, feel your lowest, deepest abdominals tone. So navel to spine connection, lift your heart, reach up, lift your gaze, feel your breath. Beautiful poses, nice Sandy. Take one more inhale here. As you exhale, here's the fun part. Cactus your arms, bend your back knee. If you wanna modify, back knee can always come to the ground, otherwise it's hovering. Start to work from the middle of your spine. Start to work your back bend. So bottom tips of shoulder blades squeeze, heart curls open. So you're not just leaning back and sinking into your low back. From your mid spine, you're starting to open. You're curling open, puffing up through your heart. Beautiful. Nice, Mariah. One more breath. Inhale back to crescent lunge. Reach your arms up. If you want, you can even straighten your front leg. Squeeze through your front thigh. Exhale, bring your hands to the ground. All right, from here, step your front foot back. Plank pose. Pause in your plank. We're gonna take a side plank. So right hand into your base, roll into the baby toe edge of your right foot. If you wanna modify, you can bring your right knee down or if you're taking care of your wrist, maybe you come down to your right forearm. Lift your hips really, really high. So rather than sinking into your shoulder and your wrist, lift through your hips and feel your right side abdominals engage. Maybe reach your left arm forward, bicep next to your ear, nice palm. Maybe float your left leg up. As you float your left leg up, can you lift your hips even higher one more round? So, so much strength and then soften around it. End of your exhale, plank or modify. Nice, Brenda. Inhale at the top of your push up. Push the ground away. Find your strength. Exhale all the way to your belly. This time, just a baby cobra. So, stay low. Use the strength in your back to lift your heart. Float your hands up and reach your hands back. I want you to keep your feet on the ground for this one. So shoelace side of your feet is pressing down. So rather than using our butt, we're gonna use our back muscles. Bring a little bend into your elbows or maybe even a big bend. And then imagine your elbows are magnetized and you're trying to squeeze them closer together behind your back. See if you can feel your mid back muscles start to fire and your chest, your heart lifts even higher. Press through your pelvis. Yes, I saw it. Nice job, you guys. Take one more big inhale, squeeze your elbows towards each other, lift, lift, lift. Nice, Jen, exhale, let it go. Ah. Find your way back to down dog in about your next three to five rounds. So anything you wanna do in between, maybe you take some cat cows, maybe you take a child's pose, maybe you wanna stay on your belly, windshield wiper your shins. So however you wanna get there, see you back in down dog. And tomorrow when we're all sore, when our backs are all sore, we can think of Jason, how much we love him. <laughs> all right, ujjayi breath. Next time you inhale, left leg to the sky. Good, so if you want, go ahead and open your hip or roll out your ankle or anything that calls to you, but then eventually square off your hips. So start to really feel the difference between square hips and open hips. It's a big difference. Your left hip faces down, your inner thighs face each other. Good, and as you square off your hips, you feel that connection to center, that little hugging in. 
press down through your fingertips, press up with your left foot. See if you can get the front of your left thigh to engage, squeeze, even those little tiny stabilizing muscles around your left knee, squeeze one more in breath. Nice work, exhale left knee to your nose, round your spine. See if you can feel mid back mobility here, round through your mid back as you push the ground away and then step forward, exhale, soft landing. Beautiful, rise when you are ready. Crescent lunge, you can take your time. Nice, Kate. So front knee over front ankle. You have a nice long stance, but then rather than just sinking into it, you're finding stability as you work your mobility. So pull front hip back, back hip forward. You're plugging the femur bones into the hip sockets. Little tone of your lowest, deepest abdominals to support your low back. Heart is lifted, it's a proud chest. Arms reach up, feel into your fingers. Maybe you spread them really wide or maybe today you wanna soften. So just be intentional. Take one more big inhale. Exhale, cactus your arms, bend your back knee. If you wanna modify, back knee can come down, otherwise it's hovering. Start to work your back bend from the middle of your spine. So start by pressing your arms back, chest forward and then squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. Keep that tone in your belly, navel to spine. Yes, beautiful poses. One more round, soft through your face. Inhale, back to crescent lunge. If you want, you can straighten your front leg. Squeeze your front thigh, squeeze those little stabilizing muscles around your knee. Exhale, hands come down. Step your front foot back, plank pose. And then pause, side plank, Vashisasana, left hand is your base. So roll onto the baby toe edge of your left foot or bring your left knee down or left forearm down to modify. Lift your hips really high. Get out of your wrist, out of your shoulder. Use your oblique strength. Maybe take your right arm forward, bicep next to ear. Maybe float your right leg up. Awesome. So you're so strong. You're so powerful in this pose. And then can you find that little bit of sweetness, that little bit of softness, one last round. Beautiful job, end of your exhale, plank or modified. Pause at the top, breathe in, push the ground away. And then exhale, slow motion down to your belly. Again, start with your baby cobra, and then move into locust pose. So hands float up, reach back, and this time, Lift your feet, reach your toes towards the back of the room. Lift your legs, I should say, so as high as you can. Try not to widen your legs, hug them in. So like you're squeezing a block, and even imagine you're trying to rotate your inner thighs up towards the ceiling. Bring that bend into your elbows, palms face each other or palms face the ground, bend your elbows, squeeze them towards one another. Feel your mid back muscles fire. Feel your heart lift even higher, open even more. Hug in with your inner thighs, breathe down into your belly. One last round, soften through your face. Nice work, let it go. Awesome, Chris. Take about three to five rounds again to find your way back to down dog. So anything you wanna do in the meantime. Reconnect to your ujjayi breath. Inhaling, glad you're joining us. <clears throat> All right, next time you breathe in, right leg to the sky. This time, everybody peel your right hip open, so bend your right knee. Reach it out, reach it up. This pose as well, you might feel it starting in the middle of your spine, moving up into your legs. So keep both hands rooted, both shoulders square. Feel your mid back muscles engaging, hugging around your spine. Active through your right foot. So flex, point, or floyd. See if you can lift your right knee a tiny bit higher. Take one more big inhale. Beautiful, exhale right knee to your left elbow or as close as you can come. 
Nice, Mariah, inhale back up, three-legged dog. You can open your hip if you want to. Exhale, right knee, right elbow, or aim for your armpit. You can even add a little push up if you want to. Don't let your butt drop down. Inhale back up, lengthen, open your hip if you want. And then last one, exhale, knee to your nose. Scoop out your belly. Step forward softly, low lunge. All right, from here, rise up again to crescent lunge. So take time to find stability in your legs, to set yourself up intentionally, to find your breath, to feel it flowing through. All right, we're gonna move into a balancing pose. So we're moving towards a warrior three. If you want to start with your hands on your front thigh, that's totally fine. Otherwise, arms reach up or cactus position, your choice. See if you can find that mid back strength before you go into the balance. So squeeze your back muscles around your spine, but stay toned through your belly. Navel to spine connection. When you're ready, lean forward, root into your front foot, float your back leg up. So imagine if your arms are forward, cactus arms are even reaching straight out to the sides. Imagine you're trying to press your arms up and your chest down. See if you can feel that strength in your back body, use it to help hold and support you. Your hips are square, your inner thighs face each other, back leg is strong. Take one more round, your fullest expression. Arms press up, chest presses down. End of your exhale, back to crescent lunge, soft landing if possible, breathe in. Good, exhale, bring your hands to the ground. Walk your hands all the way over to the left long edge of your mat, parallel your feet, straighten out your legs. Inhale to a halfway lift. And then you can choose, we're gonna move into skandasana with our left knee bent. So you might leave all 10 toes facing forward, Crawl your hands towards the back of your mat a bit. Bend your left knee. That can be as far as you go. Otherwise, pivot your left toes towards the back edge of your mat. Right toes face the sky. So you're on the back of your right heel and it's pressing into the ground. If at all possible, keep your left heel on the ground as well. Maybe you lift your arms and see if you can reach your arms out to both sides like wings. Press your arms back and your chest forward. Feel your mid-back strength even here. I did this one time with Jason in an Eye of the Tiger workshop. We held it for like two minutes and my back was so sore the next day. So you can be here longer than you think, longer than your mind tells you. Soften around it. Take about two more breaths. Good. Nice job. Good variations. Come back to your wide-legged straddle position. So both legs straight. All 10 toes face forward. Let's take another inhale to lengthen. And then this time, just fold it in. I'll even you out on the other side, but if you feel so inclined, you wanna go forward, bend your right knee, take the other side of Skandasana, feel free. You've got about three to five rounds, wherever you wanna go or just hang out where you are at. So deep power is all about not just holding the poses, but really getting deeper and deeper into each pose the longer you are there. So what can you notice? How can you adjust your body to get more out of the posture? How can you explore to find new spaces inside? Very good. Nice job, you guys. Feel free to exhale out your mouth at any time. I love an open mouth sigh if I feel like there's too much there's too much energy. There's too much sensation. There's too much emotion. Let's breathe it out. Ah, take one last round. Next time you inhale, halfway lift, fingertips on the ground. Bend your knees if you need to. Crawl your hands to the top of your mat. Rotate your toes to face forward. And then this time, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift position. Exhale, bow, let it go. Ah. Root through your feet, take it all the way to stand, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. All right, inhale, arms reach up. Root into your right foot, float your left knee up, standing staff. 
So find your balance here. And then we're gonna start to move back and forth through standing step and a low lunge. So take one more inhale in standing step. If you want, you can extend your left leg forward. And then as you exhale, slowly take your left foot all the way back. See if you can touch down with your fingertips and toes at the exact same time. So up and down slowly with your breath. If you want, you can play a little bit. Maybe you pause in a warrior three. Find your mid-back strength. Find your connection to center. Then you land softly. So a few more times back and forth. Focused and alert, but calm and relaxed all at the same time, holding both. Really root down through your right foot as you rise. Really stay connected to your center as you lower. Finish the round you are on, or maybe take one more. We're going to end up in standing staff today. So not in a low lunge, standing staff. All right, all the way back up, balancing on your right foot. Now we're just gonna switch our legs, set your left foot down, lift your right knee. We're gonna stretch our right hip. So figure four with your right leg. Sit back into a one-legged chair, or maybe you wanna take it into a forward fold. Maybe you even wanna play with an arm balance. So give your right hip a nice stretch, whatever that looks like for you. Active through your right foot, flexion through your right toes, and press your outer ankle firmly to the top of your thigh. Breathe all the way down into your hips. Yes, very nice, Miss Laura. Soften around the pose, soften your face, soften your outer shell. Take about two or three more rounds. What is there to notice? What is there to feel? And can you just allow it? Give it permission to flow through you. Take one last breath if you want. Open mouth, exhale. See if you can stay balanced on your left foot. Come back up to a standing staff. Right knee lifts. Good, arms reach. Maybe you extend your right leg and then take it all the way back, low lunge. Only doing it one time. <laughs> Plant your hands, three-legged down dog. Take your left leg back and up. Open up through your left hip now. Bend your left knee. If you would like, option to flip your dog. Step your left foot down behind you. Reach your left arm forward. Lift your hips, lift your heart. See if you can feel your mid-back muscles squeeze around your spine. And imagine you're trying to reach your heart forward. Beautiful, one more round. Nice, Sandy. End of your exhale, everybody, just a regular down dog. Walk it out in your down dog. And then you can either move through a vinyasa, end up in a child's pose, or just lower your knees and take a moment in child's pose to rest. Sometimes I like to rock my hips side to side. Sometimes I like to reach my hands back towards my heels for embryo. So just give yourself a moment, reconnect slow and steady, feeling your body, feeling your breath, taking it all the way down into your low belly, all the way to empty every single axiom. All right, take one more round here. And then downward facing dog. Okay, from down dog, left leg to the sky. You were just here a moment ago, open your left hip, bend your left knee, reach it out, reach it up. Pay more attention to your mid back this time. So hands stay rooted, shoulders stay square. But starting in the middle of your spine, that's where this twist really begins. And then feel that opening in your hip. See if you can activate your left foot even more and lift your left knee even higher. Take one more inhale. Exhale, left knee, right elbow. So push the ground away as you come forward. Get as close as you can. Nice, Kate. Inhale, three-legged dog. Open your hip if you'd like. 
Exhale, left to left. Aim as high as you can at a push up if you want. Don't let your butt drop down. Inhale, back up. And last one, everybody. Knee to your nose, round. Scoop out your belly and then step forward softly. Crescent lunge again, rise. Take your time settling in, finding stability. Good, so hips nice and square, legs nice and strong. To modify, you can bring your hands to your front thigh. Otherwise, arms are reaching up or cactus arms. And if you want, you can even reach your arms out. So we're trying to find that connection to our mid-back muscles. Press your arms back, press your chest forward. Feel your back muscles hugging around your spine. Notice, am I still connected to my center or did I lose it? Draw your belly button back. Now, whenever you're ready, keep all of that. Lean forward just a bit, root into your front foot, float your back foot off the ground. So you're in a halfway lift position with your spine. See if you can press your arms up towards the ceiling at the same time as you're pressing your chest down towards the ground. Keep your back leg strong. It's like you're stomping your back foot on the back wall. Back of your neck is long, so gaze is down. Beautiful poses, feel into all of that length, all of that space, one more round. Nice job, end of your exhale, come back, crescent lunge, soft landing, inhale. Good job, exhale, hands to the earth. Step your front foot, for, or actually, let's take our wide-legged fold, sorry guys. So over to the right side of your mat, parallel your feet, straighten out your legs. Halfway lift, inhale. And then again, you can choose. All 10 of your toes might stay facing forward. Start to crawl your hands towards the back of your mat as you start to bend into your right knee. Stay here or pivot your right toes towards the back edge of your mat. Left toes pivot up towards the sky. Your butt goes down towards the ground. So your butt's not sticking out behind you. A lot of times it's an adjustment of your pelvis. Let your butt move down. Maybe lift your arms up, reach them out to the sides, open through the front of your heart. If you're on your left heel, flex your toes and press down firmly through your left heel. If you have both heels on the ground, awesome. Imagine you're trying to squeeze them towards each other like they're magnetized. Take one more big breath, really nice. End of your next exhale, come back to your wide-legged straddle. So fingertips on the ground, crawl them forward, parallel your feet. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, either fold or explore on your own. A few deep breaths. Notice, feel, observe, just be in your own body, be with your own breath. take one more round side out your mouth if you want to ah next inhale fingertips to the ground halfway lift walk your hands forward rotate your toes forward now step your back foot forward forward fold inhale to find your halfway lift Exhale, bow, ha. Root through your feet, rise up. Arms to the sky, big stretch. Hands to heart, exhale. Inhale, take your arms up. Root into your left foot. Right knee lift, standing staff. Flex your toes, hug in with your inner thighs. Find your balance. If you want, you can extend your right leg forward. Take one more inhale. Slow motion, low lunge as you exhale. So bring your right toes all the way back. See if you can touch fingers and toes down at the same time. Back and forth with your breath, a few rounds, just like that. Make it a meditation in motion. So rather than tuning out, going somewhere else, focus on what's right in front of you. Feel your left foot root as you rise. 
feel your connection to center as you lower. Maybe you want to throw in a warrior three. Pause there. Take a breath there. So moving slowly, intentionally, focused and alert, yet calm and relaxed. You can hold it all, nice Laura. Take one, maybe two more rounds. If you're feeling that heat in your left hip, that's exactly what we want. Breathe into it. End up in a standing stack. So balancing, top of your mat, right knee is lifted. Good. Take one more inhale. And again, if you want, you can extend your right leg. And then exhale, set your right foot down and we're just switching it up. Lift your left knee, flex your left toes. Now sit back into a one-legged chair, figure four. So you can start in a one-legged chair, stick both sit bones out behind you, weight is in your heel. And then if you want, maybe you take it somewhere else, forward fold, twist. If you wanna play with an arm balance, absolutely feel free. Keep the flexion in your left toes, nice CC. Keep sending your breath all the way down into your hips. Good breathing, you guys. Use your breath to soften so you're not just straining, you're not just forcing, you're softening around it. Ah, I find that little bit of sweetness. Take about two more. You fall in and out, awesome. Meet yourself right there. That's your practice today. Let's slowly come back to standing staff, right foot roots down, left knee lifts up, arms reach up, breathe in. And then exhale, low lunge, all the way back, just one time. Once you're in your low lunge, take your right leg back and up, open up your right hip. Start to feel into all that strength in your back body. Option if you want to flip your dog, right foot steps down behind you. Right arm forward, heart forward. And there's nobody I have ever seen do a back bend like Jason Lawner because he knew how to use his mid back muscles so well. Lift your heart, reach your heart forward, feel your back muscles hug around your spine. Lift your hips. Nice, Christine. One more round. You got it. Nice job, Tracy. Come back, downward facing dog. Walk it out. Good work, my friends. All right, inhale, rock forward to a high plank or a modified plank. Exhale to slowly lower to your belly, just like we've been doing. Start in your baby cobra. And then move into your locust pose. So float your hands up, reach them back, float your feet up, reach them back. Feel into your mid-back mobility. This might be where you stay or option to either interlace your fingers or bend your knees, reach back and grab hold of your feet. Maybe your ankles even. Once you've got that, kick feet into hands, pull hands back into feet. So work it with gentle leverage. Keep hugging in with your inner thighs. Feel that lift in your heart by squeezing your mid back muscles even closer to your spine. Take one more round, breathe all the way down. You got it. Good job, let it go. End of your exhale, just rest. Take a moment. You can windshield wiper your shins if you want. And in your next few breaths, downward facing dog. All right, you've made it. Take your right leg to the sky. Pigeon pose, right shin to the top of your space. Set your body down. So take a moment to set yourself up with stability rather than just sinking into your hips. Rather than flexing your foot, 
find what's called a floint. So it keeps your, the front of your ankle nice and long. This is what Jason always said. So spread your toes like you are trying to flex just your toes, but the front of your ankle stays nice and long. Pull your front hip back, back hip forward. So you're not just sinking into it, plopping into it. There's stability. Keep pulling your front hip back as you take your heart forward. Jason would be like, who taught everybody in Salt Lake to flex their feet in pigeon pose? So find that length in the front of your ankle and just keep your toes nice and active. Energetically pull your right hip back as you bow forward. And then let whatever is there, just be there, feel it. Breathe into it, soften around it. Good job, friends. About five more breaths. I'm gonna come around with my little essential oil spray. If you don't want it near you, for whatever reason, just give me a raise of your hand. Thank you. Open mouth, exhales at any time. Last couple breaths. All right, end of your next exhale, slowly start to lift your upper body. We're gonna come into a seat. So ease your way onto your right butt cheek. Swing your left leg around, give your legs a little shake out. And then we're going to work with double pigeon today. If that's not accessible to you, I will give you options. So your first option, if it's not accessible, is to just lean back, bend your knees, feet on the ground, and then take a uh, figure four with your legs right here, or you can even go down onto your back if you'd rather. The other option would be left leg straight and you can make it more of a forward fold. Otherwise, left shin underneath right shin. So your shins are stacked and your outer ankle is right on your inner knee. So you don't have your foot inside your calf like this. Outer ankle, inner knee, feet flexed and active in this one. So pull your butt back and reach your heart forward. And then maybe bow. If your top knee is a lot higher than your hip, then you might just sit up tall and that's where you stay. Keep that flexion in your feet, in your toes. If you have naturally really open hips and you don't feel much here, take your hands to the soles of your feet and press your hands into your feet. Press your feet back into your hands. So you're stabilizing just as much as you're stretching. Good job. Yeah, I love the variation. So wherever you are, be there fully. That's all mindfulness is, just doing whatever you're doing with your full attention, your full awareness. Breathe into it, soften around it. Good job, a few more rounds. If you're clenching your jaw, tightening through your forehead, notice that, soften, last couple breaths, open mouth size if you want. <sighs> if you are in a forward fold position, you can either lead with your heart to come up or maybe you wanna roll up. And then everybody, for a moment, take both legs out in front of you, uncross them, give them a little shake out. And then lastly here, let's find a twist. So you're gonna bend your right knee again, bring your right foot to the outside of your left thigh. 
Left leg can stay extended or left knee can bend, left heel towards your butt cheek. You choose, make sure both sit bones can stay grounded. Hug in with your, so wrap your hands around your front knee and hug in, lift your heart, roll your shoulders back and down. If your left leg is extended, flex your toes. Take your right arm to the sky, inhale. So you can get even taller, reach way up. And then exhale, twist, right hand comes down behind you. Gaze back over your right shoulder. Your left hand can stay where it is at, or if you like, you can latch your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Stay tall through your spine. So try not to lean back on your right hand, but use your right hand or your right arm just to help you find more length. Lift up through the crown of your head, broaden through the front of your shoulders. Puff up through your heart with each inhale. Breathe down to your belly and exhale all the way to empty. Take about two more rounds. Good job, my friends. End of your next exhale, unwind just your upper body. Hands over to your left side and then round your spine, crown towards the ground. Your right butt cheek can lift. I like to even push down with my hands as I really round and kind of turn towards the back of the room even. So feel into this. Seems simple, but there's a lot to notice. Breathe down into your low back. One more big breath. And then let it go. Come back up. Take both legs out in front of you. A little shake out. We'll find our way back to down dog. So however you want to get there, option if you want to take boat pose for a couple of breaths, if you want to get really crazy, I would always practice this one with Jason so I could get better at handstand. It's so hard. So wherever you want to go and then cross your ankles, come forward to hands and knees, maybe take some cat cows, maybe move through a vinyasa. However you want to get there, next few breaths, down dog. Yes, nice, Chris. Love it. Awesome, you guys. Ujjayi. Inhale, left leg to the sky. And pigeon pose, left shin top of your space, set your body down. Take your time to set yourself up. So lengthen through the front of your ankle rather than just flexing, fluent. So it's like a Barbie foot. Pull your left hip back and even slightly up. So you're not just plopping down into your hips. As you pull your left hip back and slightly up, your heart goes forward and down. Once you are bowing, if you want to go deeper, you can scoot your back knee back just a little further. Send your breath into your hips. Soften around the pose with each exhale. Maybe you notice this side feels different than the other side. Honor that, adjust to that if needed. Take about three more rounds. Sigh it out your mouth if you want. Ah. All right, end of your next exhalation. Start to lift your upper body and then ease your way over onto your left butt cheek. Swing your right leg around. Give both legs a little shake out. And then 
Again, same options. Right foot on the ground with your knee bent, outer left ankle, top of your right thigh. You can work here. You can work here. You can work here or full double pigeon. Fire log pose, left shin on top of right. Outer ankle to your inner knee. So it's not foot to your calf, but outer ankle all the way up to your inner knee. Flex your toes, reach your butt back as you take your heart forward. So you're not just rounding and then just collapsing. You're lengthening, lengthening, and then let go. And then if, again, you have just naturally really open hips and you don't feel very much here, work the stabilization. Take your palms to the soles of your feet and press. Press hands into feet, feet back into hands. Reach your sit bones back and your heart forward if you're folding. Notice if you're clenching your jaw, tightening through your forehead or even your eyelids. Keep that flexion in your toes. A few more rounds. Can you allow yourself to feel everything there is to feel? without trying to avoid it, without wandering off somewhere else. Just being with what's there, letting it flow through. Last round, if you want, open your mouth as you exhale. If you are in a forward fold position, lead with your heart to rise or roll up, you choose. And then uncross your legs for a moment, everybody. Shake them out. And we'll take our twist. So left knee bends, left foot on the ground. And bring your left foot to the outside of your right thigh. Once you're there, you decide, do you want your right leg extended or do you want to bend your right knee? Bring your heel towards your left butt cheek. Make sure both sit bones can stay rooted. Hug your left knee in and lift your heart up. Lift through the crown of your head. Flex through your right toes if your right leg is extended. Take your left arm up, breathe in, lots of length. And then exhale, twist to the left. Left hand comes down behind you. Your right hand might stay where it is at, or you can bring your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Use it as gentle leverage to work your twist. Remember, we're not leaning back onto our left hand. You might even lift up to your left fingertips. So use your left arm to lengthen even more, to live through the crown of your head. Broaden through the front of your shoulders through your collarbones. So try not to let your heart close, but let it open. Breathe down into your belly. Last couple of rounds, use your exhales to work your twists. End of your next exhalation, unwind your upper body and take your hands over to your right side, that little counter twist, that little bow. So crown towards the ground. It's fine if your left butt cheek lifts now. And again, I like to push into the ground with my hands. I'm gonna twist my body even more towards the back of the room. Breathe down into your low back, last big breath. Okay, lift up, uncross your legs. Take it all the way down onto your back this time. And we're gonna move through those funky bridge poses one more time. So anything goes for just a moment. Maybe you wanna draw your knees in, maybe you wanna take a full body stretch and then set yourself up for bridge pose. So this time, see if there's anything new you can notice. And if you would like at any point, you have the option to pop up into your full back bend, upward facing bow. So set yourself up for bridge and I'm just gonna let each of you guys move into it when you're ready. Everyone in this room and everyone on Zoom knows how to get into bridge pose. Once you're in bridge, find your robot arms if you're taking those lifts and lowers or if you want to, you can go for your full back bend. Maybe you wanna take a few rounds and then pop up into a back bend. So use that mobility in your mid back to let your heart open more. Yeah, each time your butt comes down, your ribs and your heart 
chest, lift a little higher, press through the back of your head, backs of your arms. Move with your breath. Beautiful friends. After about five to seven rounds, or if you are taking a full back bend, after a few rounds there, come back down, no rush whatsoever, and go straight into your windshield wipers. Nice job, everybody. I, after I learned these from Jason, I started practicing them like 10, I would do 10 rounds like every day. And it seriously changed my life. It changed my posture. It changed the way I sit, the way I stand and the way I practice. So the more awareness we have, the more awareness we have, <laughs> right? After you've taken a few rounds of windshield wipers, let your knees fall to one side and stay on one side for a few rounds. And if you want, you can take the variation with your outer, the outer edge of one foot on the outside of your knee. So whichever leg is inside, that's the one that we want to lengthen. So whichever leg is kind of on top, you're pressing your knee forward and down. And if you want, you can use the outer edge of your other foot to help with that. Nice, you see? So find the length, whichever leg is on top from that shoulder down to your knee. If your back ribs lift up a lot, at this point, see if you can press down through your back ribs a little bit. Nice, Mariah. After a few rounds on one side, switch to the other side. After you've taken a few rounds on both sides, no rush, just like we did at the very beginning, let your feet stay wide, let your knees fall in, constructive rest pose. Give yourself a few rounds there. And then eventually happy baby pose. Rock it out in your happy baby. Maybe you want to extend one leg and then the other. Both at the same time. If there are any other poses that you would like to take to complete your practice, Feel free. So if you want one last inversion, if you want one last heart opener, hip opener, maybe you just want to roll out your ankles and your wrists. Eventually come to rest in your Shavasana. So as you transition into your own final relaxation, I have a reading for you. So, This is this is a reading by Henry Van Dyke. He 
says, I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch her until at length, she hangs like a speck of white cloud, just where the sea and the sky come to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large and massed and whole and spar as she was when she left my side. And she is just as able to bear the load of living freight to her destined, load of living freight to her destined port. Her diminished size is within me, not in her. And just at that moment when someone at my side says, there, she is gone. There are other eyes watching her coming and other voices ready to take up the glad shout. Here she comes, here she comes. And that is dying. I just like to think of dying as not a life ending, but just a new beginning. And I feel personally that Jason's energy anyone we've ever lost, their energy is here. It's always here somewhere. We just can't see it in the same way. So these last few moments, I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna play my bowl. This is a third eye chakra bowl. So your third eye is your connection to your own intuition, your own insight, and even your own imagination. So just let the sound, let the vibration move through you. Let whatever comes, come. Let whatever goes, go. And just feel it all.
take a deep breath in and let it go. And slowly start to bring movement into your body again. Wiggle your fingers, your toes. And you feel yourself against the earth. Letting it hold you. As you're ready, just find your way to either side, fetal position. Take a moment to just rest there in this nurturing pose. And let yourself feel that nurtured, held. Using the strength in your arms, ease your way up into seated meditation. So just closing our practice here. Sit up tall. Close your eyes. Gather your hands to your heart. Bow your head to your heart and acknowledge yourself for taking the time out of your day to roll out your mat, to do your practice, to feel your body, feel your breath, connect with yourself in a deeper way. Thank you for letting me guide you. Namaste. Love you. Love you, Sarah.